Hey everybody, welcome back to a new video. Right here is my 50 amp Reliance Controls transfer switch. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how a transfer switch like this can reduce your power bill. Now traditionally, a transfer switch like this is designed to be used during a power outage. Most people will take a gas generator and plug it into the inlet. And once the generator's up and running, you take each one of these switches and you flip them up to generator input. So then you are powering these 10 circuits off this input source instead of grid power. The transfer switch essentially isolates these completely from the grid so there's no risk of backfeeding and hurting people that are working on the power lines. Now, how does this all come together to lower your power bill? Well, when using a transfer switch, you can actually use it all the time. You don't have to use it just during power outages. And also, instead of plugging in a gas generator, you can plug in alternate power sources. For example, down here, I have a large power station, which is essentially a battery and inverter. And I have solar panels that come in from outside to charge this up. So I can charge this with solar and then run these 10 circuits off solar power instead of grid power. So I can actually lower my power bill and get a return on my investment. So basically when you're using a transfer switch like this, you're creating a small off-grid system within your own home. Whenever you have the switches up in the generator position, you're running off the alternate power source. But let's say your batteries start to die or you don't have solar to charge anymore, well, it's super easy to go back to the grid. You just take one of the switches, flip it down, and you're back running off grid power. Now, how much money are we talking about? Well, let me break it down. This is the EcoFlow Delta Pro Ultra, and you can actually go in and see these uh, stats per day, week, and month, and year. So let's look at a week in June. We're gonna go back to the beginning of June here. So look at this. This is a really good week of solar. So 160 kilowatt hours of production just during that week alone. With my rates, which are around 14 cents per kilowatt hour, that's a little over $20 of savings that week. Well, let's look at the month of June. So you can see it's kind of up and down here, 578 kilowatt hours uh, produced during that month. That is around $80 of savings with 14 cents per kilowatt hour. Well, what if you have rates up near 35 cents per kilowatt hour like in California? Well, that's over $200 worth of savings per month on your power bill. Now what's great about a transfer switch is it has a ton of flexibility. You can start with a small system and you can enable one or two of these circuits. So you can power a fridge or your home internet and router. And then as your system grows bigger and bigger, you can start to use more of these circuits. And so if you had more solar, more batteries, you could essentially leave this powered on all the time so you're running a portion of your house off-grid all the time. It's nice to have like a half on-grid, half off-grid setup. And so when you need the grid, you can go back to the grid. But if you want to save power, use the transfer switch and go off-grid. Now, what about the installation of a transfer switch and can you do it on your own? The answer is yes. I was actually very impressed with the installation instructions that came with this particular transfer switch. If you have any basic electrical experience, you should be able to follow the guide step by step and install this in about two hours. It took me two hours to install this, but I also had to deal with a bunch of drywall around the transfer switch. It might even be faster if you don't have to deal with drywall. Now, of course, if you don't have that experience or you aren't comfortable, you can definitely hire a local electrician to install the transfer switch for you. Hopefully you could do that for $500 or less. Now, the most important part about the transfer switch is selecting the critical circuits that you want to pull from the main power panel. Basically, you want to choose the most important loads that you want to run during a power outage or the most important loads that you possibly want to run off solar and batteries in the future. Now, I'm betting a ton of you are going to ask why this switch here is black and all the other ones are gray. Well, basically, I had one of the switches fail. And so I had an existing smaller transfer switch that I took apart and assembled that switch here, which is a black switch. I bet I could have reached out to Reliance Controls and gotten a new switch, but I already had one laying around, so I installed a black switch there. That's why it's a different color. Now, just to give you an idea of what I have connected to my transfer switch, well, I have these 120 volt loads. I have my main refrigerator and my basement refrigerator. I have my garage door opener, my internet, modem, and router. I have a couple different lighting circuits, my kitchen microwave in case I need to cook something, kitchen outlets for plugging in toasters or blenders, 
And also I have my home office for working. And then I have a backup heating source. I have a gas fireplace that runs the ignition fan on one circuit. And of course, some bedroom outlets. Now you can choose to put whatever you want on here. You can put 120 volt or 240 volt loads, but I've opted just to stick with these basic 120 volt loads. Now, one thing that I've loved to do this summer, whenever my batteries get full, is I power up the EcoFlow Wave 3 as an additional cooling source. Now, you could definitely do the same thing with a window AC unit, but it helps cool off this large space, and it's awesome to be able to run this off solar power. Now, what if you're someone that can't afford to have a transfer switch installed, or you're living in an apartment so you don't have permission to install one? Don't worry, you can still reduce your power bill by using a power station and charging it with solar. For example, you take the individual appliances and you connect them up to the front of the power station with heavy duty extension cables. I'd recommend using 12 gauge wire in those extension cables so there's no risk of overloading or melting those wires. Now, obviously that's not as convenient as a transfer switch. The main benefit to a transfer switch is that you can quickly swap between grid power and generator power or off-grid power, and there are no cords going throughout your house. Now, I've actually had a lot of viewers reach out wanting to know what I use for a daily setup and to give a tour of my setup. So let me take a second to go through that. At the center of my setup is the EcoFlow Delta Pro Ultra or DPU. I actually have three expansion batteries connected up. Each one has six kilowatt hours of capacity, so 18 kilowatt hours. Now, the inverter on the DPU is rated for 7,200 watts output. That's 30 amps at 240 volts. So I have this 30 amp cable connected to the output and that goes up into the transfer switch. Now this is a Reliance Controls Pro Tran 2. It's the 510 meaning this is rated for 50 amps and it has 10 circuits. Now this is a 50 amp inlet but there's no issues there using this adapter cable so 30 amp to 50 amp. I'll include the link to these down in the video description. As long as I don't go over 7200 watts it'll be fine but if I go over 7200 watts the inverter for the DPU shuts off. Now, what about solar? Well, outside I have four different solar arrays. I'll show you guys that here in a minute. But the solar wires come through the conduit here into this box, which has DC breakers. These are each rated at 1000 volts and 20 amps. Each array has its own DC breaker. So two of the arrays go into the DPU, the high PV and the low PV input. And then two of the other arrays go into these 48 volt charge controllers to charge my 48 volt battery bank. Now I use this 48 volt battery bank here, this mixture of batteries. They're all wired together in parallel. They are the same chemistry and voltage so you can wire them together in parallel. I use those to kind of supplement the DPU um, on cloudy days and when it gets, um, after the sun goes down, I charge this for a couple hours. But I mostly use these batteries to charge power stations that I'm testing because I don't want to plug them into the grid and you know be charged for that power so why not use this stored power to do that basically how this works is I have multiple batteries these are XZNY 280 amp hour batteries there's four of them they're 12 volt batteries wired together in series for a 48 volt battery this is the Ruixu Lithi 216 this is a 16 kilowatt hour battery and then I have this Lightime 100 amp hour which is a 5 kilowatt hour battery those are all tied together in parallel into these bus bars. These are the monster bus bars from Wixu. They're rated for 600 amps. Bus bars basically just give you a place to attach all the negatives and positives. So you're kind of paralleling everything up together. So these two charge controllers go into two of these DC breakers to kind of charge these batteries. And then I have two pigtails that come off and I use these pigtails to charge my power stations just with adapter cables. So just to show you how that works, let's say the sun goes down. We'll go ahead and just unplug the low PV input. So let's see what the solar does. Okay, so we're getting around 360 watts of solar with the high PV input. But let's say we're getting zero. I have the low PV input here, the sun's down. So what I do is I just connect this up. It's gonna be kind of hard with one hand. Let me see if I can do this. Oh man, I actually was able to do that. Okay, so now I'm connected into the 48 volt battery bank. So these batteries going into the bus bars through the DC breaker are now feeding the DPU. So now instead of getting 350 watts, we're getting 1140 watts. So that's basically a DIY expansion battery for the DPU. And then what's nice is if I wanted to leave that connected all the time, you just shut it off. 
and that works as a power switch and then you can see the power goes back down. Let's go ahead and do a quick tour of the solar panels I have in the backyard that charge up all these systems. Starting with this 1200 watt array over here. So this is really simple. It's three 400 watt panels wired together in series. I found these panels on Facebook Marketplace for $100 each. Absolutely amazing, they were brand new. Someone just had some leftover panels from a project. And so I do have a video on that. If you are interested in finding solar panels for cheap, you can find them on Facebook Marketplace. Now the stand system for these solar panels is super simple. Now this is from Ben with Minuteman Solar. Um, he created these stands and I've been testing them for about a year now. And these solar panels have not moved or budged ever since. And these solar stands are awesome. So um, no complaints um, for a super simple setup. I mean, just look at this. It just sits in the gravel and I have it on the gravel or these rocks, I guess, not really gravel, but yeah, I see great power from this. This is a west facing solar array. So um, this is the one that gives me the most power at the end of the day, just wired in series. And then I have a small DC breaker and then the solar wires go under the ground. Now moving on to the next solar array up on top of my shed, I have this 1200 watt array. So these are also wired in series. These are three 400 watt panels. Now to mount this, I used snap and rack rails and feet. I installed it in about an hour and a half with my neighbor. In fact, my neighbor built his shed. I have a whole video on his setup, also using snap and rack. So you can check out that video if you're interested, but we basically bought similar panels and bought the rails and feet all together. And it's a very clean install. I love the look of that. Moving on to my carport. This is my largest array. There are four 400 watt panels, 1600 watts. I'm very happy with this build as well. I do have a video on this, uh, how to mount the solar panels uh, using these special feet. These are S5 feet and snap and rack rails. And I like this carport. It's kind of like an extra heavy duty A-frame. Just show you guys like the, how it's built. But yeah, it's super durable, uh, mounted to the concrete. It's not going anywhere but also very useful for having solar on top of that because it's like wasted space. What do you have up there? Well, adding solar panels is awesome. So both of these arrays face south and these two arrays charge my DPU. Now the last solar array that I have in my yard is this lightweight portable 1000 watt array. Now this uses five of Renogy's 200 watt flexible panels. They are wired together in series for 1000 watts. And I've kind of just been doing this as an experiment to see how long ETFE panels hold up. And this has been going for over two years or about two years, kind of around the two year mark. And uh, the panels still put out excellent power and the condition of the ETFE coating is still really good. So I've been very impressed. Um, I do have a video on this. It's just a super lightweight, thin design. So you kind of store it anywhere in your yard. Now the flexible panels themselves, they don't have much of a structure. So I did build this extruded aluminum frame that goes on the back and that's how I can kind of just move it around and it just leans up on this fence. Now in the summer months when the sun is really high up or nearly vertical, this is the north side of my yard. And so my house casting its shadow doesn't cast a shadow on these panels. But in the winter time, um, like, early spring, late fall, I do have to move this array back over to where you guys also see it in my videos because um, it gets shadow over here. But in the summer months, this is an excellent place for the solar panels. Now, I'm not gonna lie, it can definitely be overwhelming seeing a large setup like this and not having much experience with solar. Just be aware, you do not have to start with a large system like this. Now, I've been doing this for multiple years and my system has kind of upgraded each year but the first system that I had was a small power station in my home office. I thought it was the coolest thing to be able to connect in my laptop, a couple monitors, and charge mobile devices. I even had a 200 watt solar panel going through the window to charge up that setup. And it was so cool to be able to run those devices off solar. So my advice to you would be start with something small, start with the power station around 1000 watt hours. The prices on these units have dropped so much over the last couple of years, so they are really affordable. So start with something small, and then as you get experience, start building a bigger and bigger system. Now, hopefully you guys have found the information in this video helpful. 
I know that as I've been using my transfer switch over the last two years, I've been able to reduce my power bill by quite a bit. Now, if anybody out there is already doing this, I'd love to hear about your guys' setup. Share with me the battery or power station you're using, what type of solar are you using, and are you using a transfer switch? It'd be really cool to hear that and share your experience with everyone else in the video. Now, if you need a place to start, I do have a basic consulting service that you can reach out to. It's called Ask Me. I'll include that down in the video description. And I'll also include a couple other videos here that you can check out about more information concerning this topic. Thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully, we'll see you guys in the next one.